Hi everybody, this is probably the number one most requested video I have ever gotten and I'm finally going to show you the balcony pas de deux from Romeo and Juliet. This is with New York City Ballet and my partner is Sean Swazi. This is the role I was most known for, probably my best role. Um, I have the entire ballet if you guys are interested, but I wanted to start with the balcony pas de deux in case there was a problem. <laughs> and just to make sure you see this before you see anything else, uh, for whatever reason, if they make me take it down. Um, but it's here on YouTube. It's been live broadcast on um, PBS and other channels, so I'm, I think we're going to be fine. So this set right here, this there's a big hole at the top that you have to avoid. Uh, which made it very interesting. Um, here comes Sean. Um, Sean was probably the Romeo I did this the most with. I danced it with Seth Orza, I've danced it with Robbie Fairchild, but Sean was my most frequent uh, Romeo out of all of them. And I loved doing it with Sean, he's an amazing actor, great partner, uh, really, really enjoyed doing it with Sean. So these stairs are terrifying, and you'll see at the end you got to run back up when you're tired. That's always fun. Uh, so coming down the stairs, I used him as soon as I could because they're literally steep. You could like dive head first down those stairs. Um, this choreography is by Peter Martins. His choreography is always very challenging. He, he has very challenging pas de deux work, work. There's lots of one-handed things. There's a lot of um, interesting partnering bits you'll see in a minute. Um, and the hardest part to me about this balcony pas de deux is pacing yourself, but also not playing to the end. You don't want to, you know, everybody knows how the story is going to end. So, but when you're living something, you don't know how it's going to end. So it's hard to not play the melancholy bits, um, especially certain areas of the choreography. So you have to, I love this little promenade. I always love doing those. Uh, pirouette into promenade. So you ha it's really hard to not play to, okay, we all know what's going to happen at the end of this ballet. <laughs> so just to keep the joy, keep the lightness, because even the score, even the Prokofiev score has a bit of a like uh, doom and gloom undertone to it. So to play against that and to just be, see, even like right here, it, this was more of, oh, I know we can't be together because our families are not happy, you know, and it's hard not to say, oh, I know this isn't going to go well. You know what I mean? It's hard to not play to the end. So here's his first little solo. Um, Sean has such a lightness about him, and he also has amazing turnout. Um, just saying. And just an ease to his dancing. These are hard. These little slides on your point shoe. There were two versions of this. I did the slide, I believe Sterling and Robbie did a lift instead of a slide. It just depended on the couple which worked better for them, a lift or a slide. This lift I'm not very fond of, it's kind of an awkward position. That should be a little bit more turned out in the back. Oop, tried to kiss me. No, not yet. Um, I'm, you know, playing shy. She's also 14, you have to remember that. You're not a mature ballerina type, you know, you have to play the innocence too. She's a 14 year old girl um, who doesn't know a lot about love yet. So it's, you know, you have this big passionate pas de deux, but you also have to show the innocence. All right, here comes, I think we're slightly late. Yeah, slightly late on that. See, this is tricky. He's got you by the hip here um, and then maneuvers you to, oh, that was good. Maneuvers you to his knee. I love this part coming up, this um, back bend into the promenade. I always liked that part. See, one-handed. Peter's partnering is all one-handed a lot of the times. Into this lift, one-handed. Around. Whoops, that was a mistake. I was supposed to stay in arabesque there, but when you're off your leg, do something else. Um, these turns, too, are hard. You do chene, attitude promenade, grabs you by the waist, one-handed. And then a little look like, oh, I'm so happy and in love and joyous. And okay, we do it again. This time we go around twice. Oops, I'm a little bit off there. Sean fixed it. This is hard too. One handed, lift that leg off the floor. And then roll around without looking clunky. Uh, that was okay. My leg should be on the floor there. That's all right. And then into another one handed promenade. I love these backwards promenades though. If they go right, it's the best feeling in the world. Um, into back bend, classic Romeo and Juliet. Let's do some jumping for joy because, you know, 
Our legs aren't tired yet. Not. <laughs> That's the other thing about this part of it. It goes on and on and on and on. By the end, you have no legs, you have no breath. Um, see, what the other thing interesting about me is I was always partnered with really tall guys because when I'm on flat, I'm, I'm very much shorter than them, but when I'm on point because I have such long feet, I end up being their height. And Sean's probably 5'10", maybe, 5'11". Um, and so when I'm on point, I am literally almost his height, but when I'm not on point, I'm a good head shorter than him. You'll see in a minute. These are hard. There's another one-handed promenade. See, all these one-handed promenades, very, very tricky. Um, right here is not the best angle. I should be a little bit more around there. That's okay. See, look, I'm a good head shorter than him now on flat. He has to literally bend down to me. See that? It's because my feet are so long that when I'm on point, I end up being their height. So I was always partnered with six feet, around six foot guys, um, because I have really long feet. Um, this little sequence here, and then we're going to do another pirouette promenade. So this goes into attitude, into passe, into front, and then it rond de jambes. That was always tricky. But again, when it went right, it was such a great feeling. Right about here is where you start to die. Your legs start to go you're breathing as much as you possibly can. I remember getting to this point and feeling like, okay, I need a second wind from somewhere. Oh, this little step is fun, these little hops. It's supposed to be in plie, but it never quite worked. And then big jeté. Yeah, his arms are gone, your legs are gone by this point, but you still have to look like, oh, I'm having the time of my life. Um, and again, then now I have to chené and do some grand jetés and a tour jeté. And literally, I mean, it's a miracle I'm getting off the floor at this point. Because um, this is the end of the first act. Peter's Romeo and Juliet is only in two acts. And you have literally gone non-stop since you started. So this balcony pot de which ends up being the very last bit, I think it's the end, the last bit of the first act, you're, you're gone. You're absolutely gone. Okay, first kiss. This is always interesting because it's upside down. And without fail, every time, a bead of his sweat would drop right in the middle of my eyes. Very romantic. <laughs> it was like clink and then we had to kiss. So I was at this point trying not to laugh because it was just funny every single time. Like I was preparing for the sweat drop. That's not a flattering angle, Katie. Fix that. There you go. Um, this step was my nemesis, these little things. This is supposed to be an arabesque right there. Those three little arabesque, 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 arabesque. Nope, never hit it once. I had such a problem with that, probably because my feet are so big. It's such a quick little step. Um, and this, as you'll see once we get to the end of the ballet, this is supposed to be the foreshadowing. This exact same lift comes in the tomb scene when she is dead. Ooh, turn out, Katie. Legs turn out, that'd be nice. Um, where you're over his back, you can't help him, first of all. But this exact same thing happens at the end. So it's a little bit of foreshadowing that Peter put in there. Um, but for the girl and for the guy right here, you are completely gone. It's like <laughs> to get back up right here. And then here comes the big kiss. But guys, kissing on stage is not what you think it is. You're literally in the back of your head, you're counting, you're listening to the music because then there's a note cue that you've got to run back up the stairs. Oh, here it comes, flight of, flight of stairs after a seven and a half minute, eight minute pot -a Always great, watch out for the hole. Um, that's literally everything that's going in your head. All right, kiss for this many counts. Okay, there's the note. Okay, I run up the stairs. Oh, watch out for the hole. Um, <laughs> don't trip, don't fall. Don't fall off the balcony because then you'll ruin the ballet. Um, anyway, so that is the balcony pot de deux. I am going to put this unlisted if you'd like to watch it without the commentary to really enjoy it. Um, I will put it as an unlisted video for anybody who is interested. I have the entire ballet, guys. I would love to commentate on the whole ballet, so we'll start at the beginning, the next video, uh, so you can see the whole thing, and I'll take you through all of it. If you missed the video where I talked about how I got cast for the first time as Juliet, kind of appropriate now, it's right there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so, so much, and I will see you next time.